actually a, a shape layer on top of a shape. Um, it's kind of the last thing that I was uh, experimenting with before I, uh, yes, yeah, so there's the test. It's got a, uh, a hectagon, and then inside of it is a completely other uh, drawn shape that's just white. saying uh, browser support. Um, I don't think it's too terrible. Um, I guess if you have to, right now you need a fallback. For me, if I had to do it, I don't know that I would take this route because I just feel like I was, if I was to put in like the workflow before, I have to do something else on top of it. But uh, I'm also uh, I'm pretty sure there's a couple other uh, plugins they might have where you might be able to create the sprites also, but I, I didn't really look into them a whole lot. So Safari 5 and older, I'm not really sure what version of OS X that is, but uh, when they actually have an uh, older Android and iOS and older, it uh, doesn't work either. So that's a broad overview. There's a lot of uh, specific things that you can dive really deep into with SVG um, as far as like uh, performance or um, animation and a lot of things can get into it. Supported by most of the modern uh, versions of browsers, do you still have to write in browser dependencies like in the PHP code? Um, not from what I've seen. I, I meant to uh, to try to actually test a lot of these myself before I did the presentation, but I just didn't get around to it. But uh, as far as as far as I've seen, it pretty much works across the board. There's really no hacks or anything that you have to do to make it work. It's kind of it's kind of nice. You know, like uh, you know, I was going to show it too. This is actually the project that I was working on. Make sure I'm not so this is our waste bits application. And I actually had this all this work done like whenever I initially reached out to Jerry about doing this uh, talk. And uh, it was kind of funny because I had it perfectly working and I remember I was like telling people like, oh I gotta work and this is so great. And then uh, I think we changed our priorities Monday morning, like something just bubbled to the top and it was like all hands on deck. So uh, I was like switching branches the one day and I saw I had a bunch of old ones and I had everything committed but I didn't actually push it up to GitHub and I blew it away. So whenever I dusted this thing off to come back to it, uh, pretty much everything that I had figured out was gone so I had to go through it all over again. Yeah. Hopefully I remember more of it this time. But. So these are a lot of those icons that I was talking about before and this is actually what the application is with the images. Uh, so go into any of these. Uh, these are all just uh, spans and classes on them. And then I've got the, uh, I'm actually not even using sprites on some of these. Uh, they're just calling them out uh, individually. Hover states. If I switch my branch, this cheater app. There's going to be a little bit of layout stuff that's not going to be exact. I think one of the icons is a different color because whenever I was uh, rebuilding out again, I was pretty much just trying to get it on the page. So, um, so this is all the uh, SVG um, icons. So you can look at the source. Well, one thing I didn't really like about it at first was so like these all have the uh, they've got your SVG tag and the view box, the classes. And then on the end, I have the height attribute because if you don't specify the height, whatever you save it at, it's going to kick it out that size. And whatever you, whatever size you save it at, doesn't really matter in terms of performance because it's just a number inside the uh, XML. So, um, so by default, I think this icon might have been like really big. So I just put a height of 16. And at first, I didn't really like doing that because it felt like doing like too much inline style. But I figured if I don't have to go into a style sheet and I don't have to write uh, a class just specifically for this page, and I can just Handle this on the fly, and I really don't feel too bad about it. So you're saying you can not inherit the site in the iPhone style sheet? Um, so you can do it, but I just decided not to because I didn't want to have to go to another place to manage it. You could, you could also inherit the iPhone. 
scalable too. It's you know, so it doesn't matter whether it's you know, two thousand by two thousand or twenty by twenty. It's going to look exactly the same. CSS can also control parts of it, which does the color variations. So you can just make like a hover CSS class for any of those buttons and make it turn gray or whatever instead of having two images. Is there an appreciable difference in file size one or the other? I know one of the things that that people talk about a lot in front end is is how fast all those assets download. If, if you were to do an SVG library instead of, uh, I don't know, you know, GIFs or JPEGs or something, or, or PNGs, it, it, or is the file bigger, is it smaller, is it basically the same? I mean, some um, of those other advantages are, you know, sound really compelling, but 
the file size standpoint, does it make a difference at all? I would have to say that, like, I don't see how these could be uh, bigger than what you have because these are basically just so like these are like the these are like the single icons and I'm seeing like 564 bytes and you know and this is a file that I could blow up the size of the whole page and that size is never going to change and I don't know if at some level maybe the uh, browser maybe is doing more work to paint it but I, I just don't really know enough to say but if I take like one of these icons here and I open it up um, so basically they're all they're all really small files and like like that one was like two kilobytes. This is what they look like inside. So like it's it's weird because I, I I guess I never known before really digging into it. Cause I always heard about SVG, but I always thought it was too bleeding edge to really mess with. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's something I would definitely like to uh, look into. And this is an example that I was talking about earlier where Adobe is throwing in stuff. So they have this uh, this comment generator, Adobe Illustrator version uh, process with the export plugin. And so there's just a couple things in there. Because so I, I saw like, a, I think some, I think for a little while people were using like HTML5 Canvas to try to do some of this stuff. So I don't know. Like, maybe there's like some kind of like middle ground, but um, I was going to try to take the branch where I did this and then compare it to the other branch I have where I was with the master where I had the images and see what the payload different was. But I uh, just really haven't gone down that, that path yet. So far it was just get it working. So I have a question. Yeah. So uh, if you were to just take the SVG file and assign it to an image source, uh -huh. would that work? Oh, uh, so, so like if I uh, just like uh, yeah, whatever, just uh, like the helper tag and just call it like, like an image. Yeah, just like a regular image. Would yeah. that would that actually load it? I'm pretty sure that you can pull it in that way, but I think the reason why I didn't like that was that uh, I don't think that you can. Uh, I don't think you have the hooks that you need to style it with CSS at that point because it's in oh, a file. Okay. And I think maybe something about the way the browser is pulling it in, it just kind of cuts ties with the resources inside. Oh, okay. Because I was happy with that at first, and I was like, oh. Like I see like people writing CSS to where you can style an SVG and I don't understand how they're doing this. And then I, I saw that uh, like Chris Boyer uses this on his website and he had said in one podcast that he gets like a crazy amount of traffic to where like I guess like he was on Media Temple and a hacker like specifically like attacked his page because I guess it was like one of the top five pages on their server. <laughs> so I imagine that if he's using it, I imagine the performance can't be that terrible, but I don't know extensively how, how well he uses it or how much he uses it, so that's kind of something I need to discover further. And with uh, Matt coming aboard, you know, I'm sure he'll tell me, you know, knock that off, man. <laughs> kill me, kill me servers. Like, to me, like, this is like one of the cooler things that I've probably done with front and stuff in a while just because of the fact that like, there's a little bit of like initial setup, but once you have that done, I just really like being able to just change things, change things on the fly. And, you know, if I need to make another icon, it just cuts down my uh, new development time quite a bit. Not having to manage the rest of the stuff or the image sprites. So, in your design, all those images are like in one SVG file, or are you like slurping in individual SVGs? So the uh, so that front uh, contribution SVG yeah. store. It's right. basically just created this blob of all the SVGs of all of them. The okay. And, I'm, and I can call them in and just pull okay. them down. Okay. Cool. And, and I was trying to learn a little bit about that more because I figured if I was going to talk about it, I should know more. But a lot of this stuff is still just so new, and, and because it has an XML kind of thing, it kind of feels kind of kind of weird. Kind of <laughs> so, old. <laughs> but. Just even like uh, some of the animation stuff that you can do with SVG, because I attended a, there was a conference I just went to this year, and the majority of the talks were over SVG. You know, a lot of them were talking about uh, the animation stuff, and that's like a rabbit hole you can go down that uh, I don't know where to start with some of that stuff. It's, 